The Ministry of Magic is the second most expensive set in this year's Lego Harry Potter Summer Wave, coming in at $100, €100 and £90 price points. You get just under 1,000 pieces and best of all, 10 minifigures, 8 of them being exclusive to this set. So let's take a look at these now. Okay, so we'll start off by taking a look at the Golden Trio in Harry, Ron and Hermione. This time these figures are partly disguised as someone else, those being Albert Runcorn, Reg Catamull and Mafalda Hopkirk, in an attempt to infiltrate the Ministry of Magic and locate the Horcrux in the form of Slytherin's Locket. That piece also comes in this set, printed on a 1x1 flat silver round tile, and is exclusive to both this set and the 12 Grimmauld Place set from this year's Summer Wave. These three minifigures are unique to this set, and in fact, I have previously made custom figures of these guys for my ongoing Ministry of Magic mock series. In my unbiased opinion, I think LEGO has done a superior job at capturing the look of these guys better than me. I do prefer my Mafalda Hopkirk minifigure to Legos, but for the Albert Runcorn and Red Catamull, Legos has definitely beaten me here. And just lastly to point out with these guys, all three of these minifigures have double sided face prints so you can reenact the chase scene through the atrium with these guys being chased by Yaxley in the Deathly Hollows Part 1 film. Speaking of Yaxley, let's take a look at him now. This minifigure is so much better than the custom Yaxley figure I put together. I love the use of the small M badge printed on his torso which is the logo of the Ministry of Magic. I do wish this minifigure had leg printing though, like my custom version, but I do very much prefer the hairpiece in this bright blonde colour. This set also comes with a Pius Fickness minifigure who was the Minister for Magic under the influence of the Imperious Curse in the Deathly Hollows films once Scrimger was murdered by Lord Voldemort. No surprise here, but I also have made a custom minifigure version of him, which when compared to the official LEGO version, I actually think compares rather well. I prefer the navy blue suit over the grey with bright blue stripes personally, but the face printing on the official minifigure is definitely superior with that goatee. In this set we also get Arthur Weasley, who looks absolutely dapper in that three piece suit and tie combo. It's a shame we don't see any leg printing here, but I am more than satisfied with this Arthur minifigure. As I am with Dolores Umbridge, who is also included in this set. This Umbridge minifigure is exclusive to this set with that new torso print which depicts her sort of cat scarfing that she wears in the courtroom scene in Deathly Hollows Part 1. The last few minifigures in this set aren't too relevant but I'll go over them anyway. We have Mrs Catamull who is the wife of Reg Catamull who Ron is disguised as. She looks how she did in the movie so I can't really criticise this figure much. We then get one Dementor like we did in the previous Lego High Potter sets such as the Expecto Patronum set of 2019 and the Hogwarts Express set of 2018. The Dementor is included so the consumer can attempt to replicate that scene in the Deathly Hollows where a bunch of Dementors are chasing Harry, Ron, Hermione and Mrs Catamull down the hallway to the elevator shaft after Harry stuns Umbridge thus destroying her Patronus charm. Speaking of which, Umbridge's cat Patronus piece also comes in this set which is absolutely fantastic. I love these glittery blue Patronus pieces and I think they look marvellous. I think the only one I want now that is still missing is Severus Snape's Doe Patronus. Now that would be cool. The tenth and last minifigure in this set is the wizard statue on the Fountain of Magical Brethren. This statue is essentially a reused minifigure from one of the LEGO Harry Potter advent calendars, so not all that exciting. The fountain itself as well is, um, well, there's no other way to describe it other than awful. It's just not a very good representation of the Fountain of Magical Brethren. I have made this fountain in my mock series and yes, while I didn't have a limited piece count, you can see that Lego's version looks nothing like the fountain at all. They should have raised the piece count by around 50 in my opinion, 
and at least integrated the three basins other than just the one. But not all of this set's side builds are a letdown. This phone box, for example, looks very good indeed and perfectly suitable for this set. I might, in fact, actually just directly pinch this build from this set and place it directly into my mock, which is high praise from me. Now going on to the main build itself, we have two office towers comprised of four rooms with an overhanging archway connecting the two office towers together. The exterior colour is dominated by dark green which is accurate to the look of the Ministry of Magic Atrium. Now these two office towers slightly differ on the exterior and that's because the office tower on the left has a fireplace at the bottom in which you can replicate the flu network where people essentially apparate in and out of the ministry. On the right tower this bottom section instead has a sort of infrastructure build with a red pipe and over there on the floor we have stacks of newspapers with Harry Potter undesirable number one printed on the cover which is very cool, I've been waiting for this newspaper print for ages. Now just to admire the architectural style of the exterior office towers and archway before we head on to the inside, I think LEGO did a fairly good job at trying to capture the look. I have also made these office towers for my Ministry of Magic mock of course, and while yes I do prefer my design in terms of being aesthetically accurate, I think LEGO's did a better job in respect to accessibility and playability. You can easily access the interiors of these offices and pose minifigures here and there, well that's not possible with mine. Speaking of the interiors, let's take a look at that now. So we'll start off with my favourite room which is Umbridge's office. We have the familiar deep pink colour all around as well as two plates with cat stickers on them which I'm going to need so many of when I come round to making this office for my Ministry of Magic mock. <laughs> As well, in this office we have a small desk and a chair, so you know, everything that you'd expect from this office is just about cramped in there. Below this office we have sort of a storage room I think. We have the stand where Fudge sits in the courtroom 10 of the Wizengamot here on a jumper plate. Then we have a stack of papers off to one side, then just a black chair off to the other. Um, I would have liked this particular interior space to be taken up by something else to be honest, but yeah, there we are. So for the other tower, we'll start off with the one at the top. We have what is probably the most interesting room, that's Arthur Weasley's Misuse of Muggle Artifacts office. Here we have a picture of the Weasley family on holiday in Egypt, on the wall accompanied by a picture of an airplane and also a clock piece which undoubtedly Mr Weasley is trying to work out exactly how it works. We then have a few tables with quite an assortment of artefacts on them, such as a cup, a teapot, a baby bottle, a fork, a radio, a blue crystal, what seems to be some sort of sparkling potion, and best of all, a rubber duck in a jar. What exactly is the function of a rubber duck? Oh, um... Now in the last room we have technically the Hall of Prophecy, now I know you can't really consider this a Hall of Prophecy, but it's still cool and I'm glad they included this in this set. We get a small brown set of shelves with what's supposed to be prophecies stacked upon them. I guess they couldn't use the actual prophecy pieces as they're too large for this, but I think the pieces they use does the trick. I also like the pearlescent nature of these pieces and think they look rather pretty. This shelf could also be knocked over like they were in the older The Phoenix film by a pretty simple Technic mechanism so there's that. Now this set can be taken apart and reassembled in any order you want to create a different look for the ministry if you will. This set actually comes apart in about 9 different pieces so you have quite the variety of options in which to assemble this Ministry of Magic set, similar to how the 2021-2022 Hogwarts expansion set worked, which kids will very much appreciate about this set. Speaking of which, let's get into our ratings for this set. So for k foles which are kid fans of LEGO aged 12 and under, I'm going to give this set a 3 out of 5. We get a lot of minifigures and the ability for them to make the ministry any way they want, such as a great big tower or whatever, are good factors which contribute to the score, but the set 
does lack any real meaningful play feature which means they could get bored of this set quite easily after a while, which isn't great considering the $100 retail price. For t -Falls, which stands for teenage fans of LEGO age 13 to 17, I'm going to give this set a 3 out of 5 again. I think teenagers are going to appreciate more the unique minifigures and the fact that we're finally getting Deathly Hollows related LEGO sets after so many years, but I think the lack of depth with this set and the disappointing Fountain of Magical Brethren build are going to be some issues which prevent some teenage fans of LEGO from buying this set as well as adult fans of LEGO. That's why I'm going to give this set just a 2 out of 5 for the adults. It's just not a very adult focused set unfortunately, which is obviously intentional from LEGO so it's fair enough. When it comes to value though, I'm going to award this set a 4 out of 5, because for just $100 you get 990 pieces and 10 minifigures, most of those being new and exclusive, and when you compare that to the 2018 Great Hall set, which also retailed for $100, you got 10 minifigures there as well but over 100 less pieces, and I thought that set was pretty good value for money at the time as well, so yeah. This gives us an overall score of 3.0 out of 5 and that wraps up today's review. If you haven't seen my recent video where I review the amazing 12 Grimoire playset, set then click the video on screen now. A big thank you to Phil, Sue Penn, Lucas Hatch, Kay Crossley and Brightest Witchbricks who are all tier 2 and 3 members of the channel. I'll catch you tomorrow where I will be publishing my review on a new Shrieking Shack and Whomping Willow set. I'll see you there.